This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Hull Test, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request, we've got from Michael Montgomery. Cap, please do a vid on man pads versus World War II fighters. Please, Cap. You've just got me today. Simba is asleep and RC is out fighting fires. So let's try and do, as we always try and do, our most empirical test that we can. We have, facing the direction of travel, a SA-18 Igla S Grouse. He is set to alarm state red and his skill is excellent. That's the best that we can set him up. Coming towards him are going to be an F-18 at 200 knots, 6,500 feet, reaction to threat set to none, so he will not try to dodge. And exactly the same parameters, 200 knots, 6,500 feet, a Mustang, a typical warbird, both being flown by AI to keep things as scientific as possible. Just in case we get ambiguous results, we also have the option for a lighter, older fighter as well, with a lesser heat signature. Now, the way that the heat signatures of the engines work in DCS, at least at the moment, it's very simple. Engines are either on afterburner or not on afterburner, at least for the jets. We only tested the jets. Now, I know that's going to sound really weird and you're going to probably think I'm wrong, but I've done an extensive test or set of tests on it. I've got an hour's worth of video looking at it and all the different ways we tried to measure it. And at the end of the day, we only found two differences in the actual heat signature of jets. And that is with or without afterburner. If you want to look at the study I did on that, I will link it in the video description, but that's the best I've got for that. The hypothesis today is that the lower the heat signature of the aircraft, the less likely they will be hit by the Igla missile. Now, it's very easy to tell how hot these engines are because they are just a lower coefficient. And they're out of five. This is about three, the Hornet is, three and a half. And this is like one, or probably even less than one, probably about 0 0.5. This is probably about one. So that is many times hotter than that, even if this is afterburner off, which I imagine would be completely realistic. So let's go and test. We'll start with the Hornet as our control, and we probably all know it's going to get shot down because it's 6,500 feet, 200 knots. It could not be an easier target for an Igla missile. Off it goes. Airspeed 181. Okay, sir. Do your worst. Speed it up because no one wants to sit here for 20 minutes, including me. Okay, he's tracking. Uh, visual. That's going to be a first hit. There we go. Igla out. This contact brush fuse, so it needs to actually hit the plane, and it's going to. No, it's not. It's missed. Don't know why it missed. A bit weird, but there you go. Are you going to try again? No, he's reloading. Boom. Igla has exploded. Very small warhead. And there it is. Oh, missed again. How about that? How about that? If you, the value viewers, know why it's missing, I would love to know. He's reloading again. He gets three missiles that he carries on him. Why would an Igla miss? An absolute, I mean, you know how, what it's like flying over a base. It almost invariably will, will hit you every time. Why is it so useless? Especially based on the uh, values that I got for the heat signature of the jet. Ah, right. So we're going to see a hit here, aren't we? No, we're not. We've got a miss. Well, uh... That's really weird. I don't know how to explain that, valued viewers. He shot three missiles at it, and they all missed, although one came close. I don't know why they're missing at the moment. They just are. Not much I can do about that. Uh, okay, let's try the warbird, I guess. Off it goes. Red tail, 180 knots. IAS. Very little heat coming out of those exhausts, comparatively. So those giant jet engines. Let's see if he even gets a shot off, shall we? Oh, okay. That means he's seen him visually with his eyes, and he's, you know... And track him. Is it actually going to fire the missile? Go on, fire, 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 fire. So he can't fire unless he gets a tone. I don't think it's going to get a tone. <laughs> Look, he's looking straight up. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. So he's tracking it with his eyes, but he's probably not going to get a tone. How about that? All right. I mean, that's pretty clear cut. It's at six and a half thousand feet. The heat source is so small, he couldn't even get a tone get a solution why don't we just move them down to 3,000 feet let's face it everyone wants to see this bog get blown up and i don't know why it didn't get blown up okay check 3,000 feet visual track acquired waiting for toned from the seeker seeker tone that's a hit boom and he's he's dead wow first time okay place your bets i think it Probably will fire. 
And if it fires, it probably will hit. Is he going to get a tone? Is he going to get a tone? I can see it. Oh, God. He's not going to fire. Oh, yes, he is. Break. Uh, uh, missed. Missed. Wow. Now, this is interesting. There he is. There he is. Is he going to get a second shot off? There he is. Yes, he is. Still got optical solution. He's going to fire. Now, here's the thing. Is the warbird hotter from behind like the plane is? The plane is hotter from behind. That's scientifically proved in DCS. Is the warbird hot? I've never even thought of testing before. I mean, why would it be? It's not going to fire, is it? Speed it forward. Well, that is a clear-cut result, Valley Viewers. We're going to run it again just to make absolutely sure whenever you're doing anything in science, you need repeatability. That is the basis of empiricism. So, we And hit. Yep, it's dead. And one thing's for sure, he can't fire as far away. The warbird is almost above him by the time he gets to fire. Ah, that might be the reason why it's missing. Right, I've got theory now, Valley View. Uh, stop. Ugh, I've got stuck in fast motion. That's annoying. There we go. And he won't be able to fire. Okay, it's missed again. What I think is happening, Valid Viewers, is that the reason it's missing is because of the attitude it's firing at. Now, remember when it was firing at the uh, F-18 to begin with because of the relatively less heat because it was up at 6,000 feet compared to 3,000, he couldn't fire until his igloo tube was pointing nearly straight up. And that appears to be when it's missing, when he fires nearly straight up. Now, when he fires at the warbird, at 3,000 feet, because it's a much smaller heat signature than the F-18, he has to wait until it's almost firing directly up, hence it misses the warbird. Whereas the F-18, he can fire it at just about 30 degrees up. I wonder if it's something to do with that that's uh, making the igler miss. I bet an igler doesn't track properly when going up in like a funnel upwards, maybe plus or minus 20 degrees around the vertical. Let me know what you think about that, but that's what I'm seeing here. But I guess there's just one more test to do. What if we're trying to kill this guy, actually go straight against him, head on, when he's set to maximum skill? Okay, F-18 first. We'll just go on a relatively low throttle, but like I said, according to our study, the amount of throttle doesn't matter. It's just afterburner or non afterburner. I can't remember how to use the gun. Oh, there we go. Gun. Here we go. He's not going to fire, is he? He's not going to fire. He can't get a frontal shot for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, I stand corrected. And he has missed. The, do you see the bullet? You see the shell? It went right by him. That was a bit weird. So he missed. Zap, and I killed him. And then I crashed. But that's okay. He's not going to fire, is he? He can't get tone. Oh, he's he it. But he fired much. Uh oh. Ha <laughs> ha, he missed as well. Well. Those are weird results, valued viewers, but those are the results. Man, that's better than a Hornet. Six and a half thousand feet, this cannot be hit or fired at. The Hornet can be fired at, but not hit. Three thousand feet, this can be fired at, but not hit. The Hornet can be fired at and will be hit every time. Both of them on a direct frontal attack with roughly about the same parameters. Look, the bus has gone into the water, what the heck. They will both be fired at and they will both not be hit for reasons I just, I don't know, I haven't got a clue what that is. Is it just a warbird thing? No. You can go halfway in between if you went with a C-101 or a Sabre or a MiG-15 or something like that that had IR signatures roughly in between this and the Hornet, then that would be roughly halfway in between. It's as simple as that, valued viewers. I hope that was useful and see you later.